Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and today I'm here with a book haul. Uh, a few years ago, I paid a visit to uh, a place called Ollie's in the English Creek area of Egg Harbor City, New Jersey. Uh, Ollie's is a multi purpose uh, store. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like Big Lots in how it sells uh, uh, clearance items, uh, but they have a great selection, they do a great job pitching, and their book selection is fantastic. In the month of August, uh, they opened up in Tom's River, New Jersey, uh, where they took over a vacant Pathmark slot. and. I ended up picking up many more books on my very first visit there. I'm probably going to be picking up many more books in uh, future visits. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But today I'll show you what I got on my first visit. The first three books were from the Brooklyn Public Library, uh, which I know because they didn't remove the tag on the back right here. But the first one is Confessions of a Wall Street Insider, a cautionary tale of rats, feds, and banksters by Michael Kimmelman. And this is kind of like the big short in how it has to do with the grime and slime of uh, the workings of the stock market and the banks. And... Everything that is uh, sketchy having to do with uh, where our money goes. And in this case, uh, Kimmelman is uh, telling us about uh, the uh, what happened following something that went wrong. Uh, and I'll be interested to check this out. It seems like the ones from the Brooklyn Public Library have to do with things regarding uh, hotspot issues, uh, like uh, the right to try, how the federal government prevents Americans from getting the life-saving treatments they need by Darcy Olson, and this has to do with the pharmaceutical industry and how people are being denied a chance to uh, receive the treatment, the medicine, or the necessary procedure that they feel could work because the FDA has yet to approve uh, it. But there is a very fine and sketchy line when it comes to uh, the, uh, the FDA and what they approve because... There are a lot of GMOs and other ingredients that are in our food that are approved by the FDA, but have not been uh, proven to be carcinogens or whatnot. Uh, prime examples are uh, titanium dioxide, which is used to uh, provide... A shiny white color to particular foods, such as uh, powdered sugar on a donut, or the uh, white coloring on a uh, wet mozzarella cheese. And it's FDA approved, but it hasn't been determined whether or not it is a proven carcinogen, which that's where the fine and sketchy line takes place and this is a interest this looks like an interesting exploration and i got the test why our schools are obsessed with standardized testing but you don't have to be by anya kamenitz kamenitz and uh, kamenitz is uh, very uh, in touch with the education uh, field, and this book has to do with the uh, 
obsession about relying on standardized tests to determine the intelligence of our youth when there are so many more factors and so many more uh, methods that should be taken into account when it comes to what they know and how they are being taught. The next two books that I got were two Stephen King books that I did not have, but they were a very reasonable price, so I thought I would get a hold of them. Uh, the first one is Wendy's Button Box, which was a collaboration with Richard Chismar, who is the publisher from uh, Cemetery Dance. And I was quite honored to see that he liked our discussion of Eat Me by Robert McCammon on Twitter. It's quite an honor to have people in the field of writing checking out our videos. Uh, it, it's just like the time that I wrote a review of uh, my favorite uh, make of Cabot Cheddar Cheese, and Cabot uh, responded with a uh, appreciative comment. And this is a speculative work of fiction that uh, explores a female's uh, uh, encounter with this mysterious man and a uh, mysterious box. The next book that I got is Sleeping Beauties, which Stephen King wrote with his son, Owen. Uh, we are probably more familiar with his son, Joe Hill, but uh, Owen King is also a writer uh, in his own respect, and uh, Sleeping Beauties has to do with uh, this event where women from across the globe start to uh, form a cocoon uh, that uh, blocks them off from our uh, planet. Uh, in their minds, they are living happily in uh, an alternate universe, but if a man uh, tries to take them out of the cocoon, uh, it leads to very uh, rabid and uh, horrifying uh, results, which... Sleeping Beauties, to me, is an exploration of uh, the treatment of women and how men, in general, need to do a better job in uh, recognizing and respecting women. Uh, this is probably... Uh, Stephen King has definitely explored uh, feminism in his writing. Uh, depending on how you view it, uh, but I think that this one uh, explores that matter the most. The next books that I got had to do with uh, the U.S. presidents and other historical figures, and the first one being uh, uh, Cleveland, the Forgotten Conservative by John M. Pafford. Uh, this, to me, seems like a uh, general uh, biography, uh, but it also has to do with how Grover Cleveland is often overlooked in history. Uh, on the topic of uh, overlooked presidents, I also got President McKinley, Architect of the American Century by Robert W. Merry. Uh, Merry wrote a book that I also purchased, I believe, from Second Time Books, uh, uh, a Country of Vast Designs, which has to do with James K. Polk. But uh, he talks about how William McKinley uh, was a huge factor in the expansion of the uh, American country and how uh, we greatly expanded uh, through the annexing of other territories. Uh, McKinley was huge when it came to uh, the continual growth of the country, uh, but people uh, remember most the uh, assassination. He was shot at the uh, Pan American Expedition, and he, he died eight days later, and was succeeded by 
Theodore Roosevelt, who was a much more, uh, a much bigger presence in the country. The next one that I got really caught my attention because it's uh, an opinionated uh, piece. It is more so trying to present an argument. I saw it in Barnes & Noble. Uh, I decided against getting it then, but I thought that for the price at hand, uh, it was worth checking out. And that is Nine Presidents Who Screwed Up America and Four Who Tried to Save Her by Brian McLennan. And in this piece, uh, uh, McClellan uh, talks about uh, the nine presidents, which many of which lean to the left, but there are also right-leaning figures on here as well. Uh, there are Democrats and Republicans, and the same can be said about the four, uh, even though there are more conservative-based names, uh, there, you really can't pinpoint uh, a political uh, leaning. The, uh, the chapters, uh, the nine presidents that he felt screwed up America are Andrew Jackson, uh, which the chapter is, and the antecedents of the imperial presidency. He also cites Abraham Lincoln, Theodore Roosevelt, Woodrow Wilson, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry S. Truman, Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard M. Nixon, and Barack Obama as nine presidents that he felt screwed up the country. There's a great mix of names, and many of them have been deemed to be our best presidents uh, by historians. The four that he felt tried to save America are Thomas Jefferson, John Tyler, Grover Cleveland, and Calvin Coolidge, which I will be really interested to see what position he takes in this piece, because Thomas Jefferson, somebody I've cited as being my favorite and the president I am most interested in, uh, Calvin Coolidge is somebody that I always felt was underrated as a more uh, smaller government, more neutral standing figure. Uh, and then Grover Cleveland, uh, I, from what I've read about, had a prosperous first term and a sloppy second term. And John Tyler uh, was not a very well-liked president to the point that uh, he just about lost his uh, entire support and was clearly not going to get the renomination. Next book that I picked up is American Sniper uh, by Chris Kyle with Jim DeFelice and Scott McEwen. And this is a memoir of Chris Kyle's experiences in the Iraq War. The reason I picked this up is because Jesse has uh, nominated it as a book that she wanted to discuss for the show. So I thought that since I found it, I thought I'd uh, pick it up at this point and uh, give it a go. Next one that I got is Target JFK, The Spy Who Killed Kennedy by Robert K. Wilcox, and this is a, a piece about the a spy that was allegedly involved with the JFK assassination, which uh, it's a very intriguing subject, even though I felt that there were multiple people involved with the uh, JFK assassination. We'll uh, have to see what kind of uh, impact he had uh, and whether or not he was the one that shot the lethal bullet. The 
The next book that I got is Bobby Kennedy, A Raging Spirit uh, by Chris Matthews. And this is another biographical piece about uh, Robert F. Kennedy, uh, which I'm really looking to get into RFK. And I'll be interested to see which kind of approach uh, Matthews takes in this biography. And the last book that I got is Bust Hell Wide Open, The Life of Nathan Bedford Forrest by Samuel W. Mitchum, Jr. What sticks out to me about Nathan Bedford Forrest is that he was... He was a Confederate soldier, but he was also a founding member and the original leader of the KKK, which the saying goes that the, uh, the North won the war, but the South won the peace. And a lot of it had to do with the, uh, the threats and the forcefulness of uh, the Ku Klux Klan that... Uh, would engage in racist, uh, uh, violent protests, and uh, Nathan, Nathan Bedford Forrest was the one uh, that had a lot to do with that drive, uh, not to mention his involvement with the Confederates of uh, the Civil War. It was quite a selection that I got while I was at uh, Ollie's, uh, to the point that I needed a cart, and, but it, I came out, uh, getting a healthy amount of books for a decent price, and that's what Ollie's is all about. Thank you for tuning into this video. I hope you check out some more on our channel, especially during this triathlon. And for now, keep reading.